Hello, my name is Patrick Wheeler, and in this session, I'll show you how to build a cloud data mart in 20 minutes. But before we get into the how, I must first answer two important questions. The first question is, what is a data mart? I found this definition on the web, and I think it's pretty good. A data mart is a simple form of data warehouse focused on a single subject or line of business. It's exactly the sort of thing a departmental analyst might want. Self-service business analytics, too big for a spreadsheet, but an enterprise data warehouse would be overkill. Next, why? Why might I want a data mart? It's because I have a problem. And you do too. The problem is that I need to understand my business in detail just as you need to understand yours. Here I play the role of an analyst for a movie streaming business. For example, I need to understand the sales performance of movies in various genres over time. And a data mart supports a business analysis such as this. Here I see a comparison of the sales of movies in genres drama, and science fiction over time. This sort of detailed breakdown helps me understand past performance and forecast demand. So now we can talk about how. It's a simple five-step process. One, prepare a workspace for the data analysis. Two, gather the raw materials, which for us means loading data. Three, Whip that data into shape so that four, we can analyze the data to understand our business. Then five, share that analysis with other members of the organization. And I've got to do all that in 20 minutes. In the interest of time, I'll run through a recorded demo in which I've sped up certain steps such as provisioning and data loading. Oracle Autonomous Database is the ideal platform for this work. So in the OCI console, I click on Create an ADW Database. I'll call it DBW for Database World. The workload type is Data Warehouse, and I'll provision this on shared Exadata infrastructure. Eight OCPUs should be enough for this workload, but I'll enable auto-scaling up to 24 OCPUs if necessary. I need a password for my admin account. And we'll use the license included pricing model. In reality, this takes a couple of minutes to set up, which I've cut short here. Now I need to connect to database actions as the administrator of my autonomous database. Using the database users tool, I'll create a user for the departmental analyst role I'm playing. The username is MovieStream, and I need to provide a password. This user requires web access and unlimited storage quota within this ADB. I grant DW role to movie stream to enable access to the specific tools required for this job. Now, I'll disconnect as the administrator and reconnect as the user movie stream that I've just created. Step two, load or link to data. All the raw files for this demonstration are in OCI object storage. In the data load tool, the first step is to specify how to reach it in terms of a cloud storage location. I'll name this movie stream data. It's a public bucket, so I don't need a credential. All that's required is a URL. There, I press create, and this card represents this new cloud storage location. First, I'm going to load some data from Cloud Storage into my ADB. I select Load Data from Cloud Storage and press Next. 
On the left, I see a list of files in the location I've just specified, Movie Stream Data. I want the last four files here, Customer, Genre, Movie and Time, all in CSV format. I get a card for each, press the green play button, and the data is loaded. In reality, this took 14 seconds, which I've sped up here. The movie consumption data is much bigger. Rather than load it physically, I'll leave it in place and create a link to it. I drag sales from the left to the target. And in this confirmation box, I see that this is actually a folder containing 24 files. I'm going to create what's called an external table to present all that data as if it were in relational storage. Let's look at the details of this job. I'll override the default table name and call it SalesExt instead. Here we can preview the source data, from which we see we have details of individual movie sales, and these files are all in Parquet format. OK, I'll run this job as well. Again, I sped this up, but even in real time, it's a quick operation since the data is not being physically loaded. Let's navigate back via database actions to the catalog. Here I search for tables owned by MovieStream, and there's a card for each table I've loaded, plus an instrumentation table called Cloud Ingest Log. Let's have a look at the details for the external table, Sales Ext. The Statistics tab allows me to profile this sales data. There are histograms for many columns. For example, here we see the distribution of values in column Genre ID. And already we see quite a range of popularity of movies in various genres. We also see that this data is at a very granular level movie consumption by individual customers. That's more granular than is required for any of my purposes. And so I take note that I need to aggregate this raw data to prepare for the analysis that I want to perform. Step three, transform data. To prepare the data for my purposes, I want to aggregate it to a higher level. Here I'll use the data transforms tool and create a new data flow called Sales Ag. I'll define this in a project called DBW. I need a connection to the source of the data. In this case, that's the movie stream user in my autonomous database. I build the data flow by dragging Sales Ext and customer to the canvas. I need to join these tables, so I drag the join tool from the palette and connect the two tables involved in the join. This should be a left outer join from sales ext to customer, and the join key is automatically identified for me. Next, I want the aggregate tool. I connect it to the join and specify its properties. The first step is to get rid of some of the detailed columns I don't want. Anything to do with individual customers and customer segments. There. Now I need to define how to aggregate actual price. I use the expression editor for this. I drag the aggregation expression, sum, from the function list, and column actual price from the sales ext table. Similarly, I need to aggregate list price. I want to sum sales ext dot list price 
OK. I'll use Auto Map to include all the remaining column values unchanged. Finally, I'll create a new table to store the aggregated data. I'll call this Sales Ag Ext and store it in my Movie Stream schema with the rest of my tables. This all looks good, so let's review. I'm joining Sales Ext to Customer, aggregating the data, and storing the result in a new table called Sales Ag Ext. OK, I'll save and execute this data flow. This starts a job, and by clicking this link, I can inspect its progress. The target table has been created in step one, and in step two, it has been populated with data. Let's look at the details of step two. Here's the SQL statement that's been generated from the data flow. Insert into the new table, sales ag ext. We see that actual price and list price are being summed, and here's the left outer join, just as I wanted. Great. After a few minutes, the job is completed, and now I return to database actions for the next step. Step four, analyze data. So now I've loaded the data and gotten it into the right shape. Next, I want to look at it from an analytic perspective. You might say that I want to take an analytic view. In fact, in Oracle Database, we have a structure helpfully called an analytic view for just this purpose. Let's use the data analysis tool to create an analytic view. The proposed fact table, sales ag ext, is what I want to use. That's the one I just created. This tool guides me through the process. It scans the data in the database to identify candidate dimensions, hierarchies, and measures. Here we see a proposed star schema design based on fact table sales ag ext with dimensions, genre, time, and movie. By hovering my mouse over the joins, I can see the proposed join conditions for each. These all look good. This is a great start. Now let's review this model. Here we see we have a geographic hierarchy. By inspecting the data, it's automatically identified the correct rollup from city to state to country and then to continent. Let's rename this hierarchy to geography. And this is the hierarchy for movie genres. Let's clean up that name. For data presentation purposes, rather than genre ID, I want to use the genre name for caption, description, and sorting purposes. In hierarchy movie, I want to combine the release information. I don't want a specific level for opening date, so I'll get rid of that. I'll rename the level as release year, but use opening date for the description. For the movie itself, I'll use the full movie title and use the summary in the description. I'll do some similar cleanup for the time dimension, but I'll skip through the details of that here. Let's look at the measures. Here is actual price, which in aggregate I'll call sales. Various aggregations are supported, but the default of sum is appropriate for my purposes. Now I'll add a calculated measure. Discount. This is simply list price minus sales. A more sophisticated measure might be percentage change in sales since the prior period. For this, I'll pick the appropriate calculation template for measure sales over hierarchy time with an offset of one. Here's the expression that has been built for me. So let's create this analytic view. 
we're now ready to do some data analysis. In the Analyze tab, I'll drag quarter to rows. And look at measures sales and change in sales since prior period. Here I'm showing this data in a pivot table. I can also show it graphically, perhaps looking just at sales volume in a bar chart or a line chart. Step five, share the analysis with other members of my team. And now we've come full circle. This is the business analysis I showed you at the beginning. Sales volume by month for two genres, drama and sci-fi. We see some individual movies in these two genres and can even track sales performance of two movies from the same stable. The tool I'm using now is Oracle Analytics. The key point I want to make though is that this analysis is built on the very same analytic view that I built in the previous step. Here it is, sales ag ext AV. We see the same dimensions, movie, genre, and the same measures, including the calculated measures that I defined previously. This is very powerful. The investment in defining the analytic view can be leveraged in a variety of tools, delivering consistent data analysis with each. So let's review the five steps I followed to create this cloud data mart. Step one was to deploy Oracle Autonomous Database, or ADB. In this case, I chose the template for analytics and data warehousing. Step two was to load or link to my data. You'll recall that I loaded the dimension tables locally in the ADB. However, I left the bulky consumption data in place in the object store. Step three was to prepare the data for my analysis. I did some simple aggregation to get it in the form I needed. Step four was to analyze the data. I used the built-in tool to create an analytic view with dimensions, including some hierarchies, and some measures, both simple ones and some calculated ones too. I did some basic visualization of the data, both using a pivot table and graphical tools. Step five was to share the data with other members of the team. Because the analytic view is defined in the database, its definition can be accessed by other tools. That was a quick run through, but I hope it has shown you how easy it is using Autonomous Database and its built-in tool suite to build a cloud data mart. On the right here, I provide links to more information about Autonomous Database, our data lake house, and Oracle Analytics. And Oracle Live Labs has a huge range of workshops for you to follow using these free OCI resources. Thank you for joining me in this session.